Number one is open class 2.1. And let's read. According to the World Bank data, and in 2018, China's GDP amounted to almost 14 billion, whereas GDP of Japan only 5 billion. Point A. Does this imply that recession in China would set uh, variables have a greater impact on the world economy than a recession in Japan? So, guys, please. Elisabeth, please. Uh, yes, uh, because uh, the uh, real uh, economic size of China is much bigger than uh, of Japan. The size of economy, yes. Yeah, the size. Yeah, the size of economy. Uh -huh. So uh, your point is that you that recession in uh, China would uh, affect uh, the more uh, world economies than the recession in uh, Japan, mm -hmm. and uh, also. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's discuss more. Um, who wants to uh, to add something? Maybe Maxim, Nikitin? Uh, yeah, uh, as far as I know, it's not exactly about our topic, but capitalization of yuan, uh, Chinese yuan is the highest on the world uh, trade, um, trade market, trading market. So the fluctuations uh, in GDP of China uh, affects the world uh, a lot, less than uh, more than uh, Japanese because Japanese, I think, on the fifth or uh, on the sixth place. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. So, uh, we cannot say that if GDP of one country is bigger than GDP of another country, then uh, uh, it will be almost, uh, uh, it, it will be always so that uh, uh, recession in this country will influence more. Because uh, we need to consider the trade connections of the country, yes? Today our topic is GDP and uh, uh, trade, uh, or trade of goods and services we discuss, okay? So uh, the point here is that uh, exactly, China's trade connections are much uh, are bigger than Japan trade connections with uh, other countries and uh, uh, from this point we can say that uh, recession in China can influence uh, can influence more world economy than recession in Japan but not because GDP of country is bigger so uh, here uh, from this it doesn't uh, uh, from this we cannot say, uh, that uh, this is true about uh, recession and influence, but from amount of trade connections, we uh, we can answer for positively. So let us uh, write down uh, that uh, 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 trade connections important. So, oh, and uh, uh, trade connection, that means trade openness, you can see, sounds like this. And uh, yes, in China, more trade, uh, we, we know that there are more trade connections. In China, more. Then after this, we can say yes, but uh, how, uh, but we need to make a research to understand that uh, uh, trade openness and trade connections of China are much bigger than of Japan. So we make this conclusion, yes, not from this information about GDP, but from another information for which we made research. Research. To answer. Uh, example uh, for you to remember. Uh, to remember, uh, you you can always uh, you can always consider, for example, North Korea that doesn't have any trade connections, and uh, GDP of North Korea, even if it is big or small, uh, it will not influence world economy. Agree? So, 
but China's recession will influence because of trade. Okay, good. Next. B. Uh, does this imply that uh, the standards of living in China are higher than those in Japan? Uh, Diana, please. Yeah, I'm not sure if yeah, I kind of wanted to. Uh, yes, Diana or Diana? Diana. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. I'm not uh, quite sure, but uh, it can be also. Um, uh, we can also put it in the first uh, question. I think that we can uh, speak about GDP per capita as it was in the lecture because um, the population of China is higher than population in Japan. And that means that uh, uh, GDP per capita in China probably will be lower than in Japan. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Right answer. Thank you. So we sh uh, for speaking about standards of living, we should consider GDP per capita, not GDP. Yes, and GDP per capita in China is lower than in Japan. That means that standards of living in Japan are better than in China. Standards of living better in Japan. Exactly. So, okay, that was number one. May Any I ask you? Yeah, but uh, not like not a question, but many uh, maybe a kind of contradiction because actually GDP is not a very good example of measuring uh, standard living, like the standard of living in a country, because like GDP is an an indicator of overall economic condition of the country. It gives an idea like uh, of the general mater material well being. Um, of a nation since the uh, since the higher the level of production uh, the higher the well-being of the country but GDP does not reflect the social state uh, of the nation like therefore uh, it cannot be considered I think an indicator like a good indicator for the well-being of society. Yes uh, you're absolutely right uh, GDP per capita uh, is uh, only one of uh, indicators of standards of living, and we consider here only GDP, yes, in this task. But uh, you're absolutely right, uh, uh, standards of living accounted by uh, more advanced uh, indexes uh, right now. So you, you can Google it and uh, you will see how World Bank counts uh, standards of living right now. Yes. May I also make a quick addition? I agree with what Anastasia said <clears throat> that GDP per capita is not the most accurate way to measure the um, actually the way things are for the population in the country. But if we are to work with data that are that is present in this exact task, we can see that uh, in two thousand eighteen, um, the GDP amount in China was well fourteen point six billion dollars let's say it this way and in japan for uh, 4.9 so about five so we can say that uh china's gdp is a little bit more than two times higher than um the one in japan but if we take a look at population in 2019 for example as google says we can see that population in japan of japan is uh 126 million people and China's is 1.4. So we can see that population of China is more than 10 times higher than the population of Japan. So the gap that is between the GDP and between the population is very big. And we can say that um, Japan's GDP per capita is not only higher, but it's a lot higher than the one in China because the difference in the population is much bigger than the difference in GDP. Yes, Diane, uh, thank you very much for your comment. That's very good. Thank you for your research. Yes, you're absolutely right. Yes. So, okay. Um, can we continue? Mm -hmm. So, uh, number two. Number two, our task is uh, to answer uh, which of the following transactions would be counted uh, in GDP. Easy task. So, point, uh, I, will, I will ask... Uh, or one, one point for each of you. Uh, first, the sale of uh, illegal drugs. Uh, who didn't answer? Daniel Kirsch, please. 
Uh, no, that will not be counted because that's uh, part of the shadow economy. And the part of sh shaded economy, yes, uh, illegal transaction, but shaded economy. And in GDP, we count on the legal transactions. Yes, good. So, okay, BM. Uh, the sale of uh, cucumbers to a pickle manufacturer. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Nadezhda? I think no, because it's not an official transaction. It's official transaction. Why? We, it's not a sale. It may be a sale between uh, a producer and a um, it's not. It, it's not like in supermarkets and it's not an official transaction. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, uh, you, you use the not right term for this, uh, but uh, the lo logic is right. So uh, uh, this uh, transaction is about intermediate good, not final good. It's official deal, but uh, it's uh, the deal with intermediate good. And in GDP, we count only final goods. Yes, transactions with final goods. Because oh, this is intermediate good. Yes, you, you understood, you know this, yes, that we count on the final goods. Okay, A, B, C. Next, uh, the sale of a pound of tomatoes at a supermarket. Um, uh, Alexei, please. Uh, this point will be counted as a part of GDP because it's an official transaction. Official transaction and uh, the deal with final good, that matters. Yes, yes? of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, yes. Um, there is sale of a used car. Uh, Ivan, Zamkovoy, please. Mm, no, it uh, won't be counted as uh, we do not count the redistribution or reselling of the product. Yes, uh, we do not count reselling. And also we can say that uh, uh, used, uh, maybe this used car is not produced uh, this year. And in GDP, we count only uh, goods that are produced this year. Yes? And yeah. we don't count resales. So, so two points here. Uh -huh. uh, so, no, this, this is resale, plus maybe not produced this year. Mm -hmm. A, B, C, D, E. Good. Uh, next, uh, the payment received by a construction company for an unfinished factory. I think that is the hardest point in this uh, task. Um, I didn't answer. Maxim Uzunov. Well, here I might try to guess that uh, it does count because uh, it's still some kind of a good, but here we have a very uh, weird thing, unfinished factory. Does it uh, mean that we cannot count it as a produced good or or what? Uh, we pay to whom? We pay uh, for a con construction company. In construction company, what uh, what it does? It, uh, it produces a certain uh, building, whatever. No. Uh, it uh, it builds for us uh, a factory right now. What what uh, this company is doing? It. Uh, uh, it makes for us a service, yes? Yes. And in GDP, we count all goods and services. So yeah, so it obviously does. Yes, so it will be counted. Maybe somebody wants to add to this. So please answer. Uh, maybe somebody wants to add to this point. Could you please explain once again, because I didn't really get it. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the payment received by a construction company for an unfinished factory. Uh, we pay for this construction company for providing a service. Yes. So this company constructs for us a building right now. It's a service. So why not to add it in GDP? But it uh, uh, is not a like um, it con didn't construct a final factory, and if, uh, there is no like final good or final service in case uh, it's not a finished job. 
or or is it? But uh, uh, one more time, uh, factory, uh, build factory, it's a final good, yes. But now constru uh, this construction company is uh, is building it for us. So it makes a service right now for us. Uh, maybe. Uh, and then how do you distinguish uh, not final goods from that that uh, are considered uh, final enough to pay for them? Um, okay, and Anastasia, you want yeah. to, yes, yes, yes. Please. May I uh, maybe try to explain for Lisa? Because as I understand, um, you pay for the company this year the certain price, uh, and then you don't care about uh, what, uh, how long they will build the factory for you because you paid it and you paid for like the constant price uh, for the building in the factory. You paid it in the certain year, and uh, this is the final good in this year for you, not the final good for the final service the in this year because uh you don't care how long like other like uh, workers will be building your um factory because uh, you just pay them they you you as the uh, owner or like uh, future owner of this factory you just pay others um for for their um work so this is just, um, I don't know, for example, you can, um, ha let's consider an example with a car. I pay for a car and then uh, in, a, I don't know, how long they will uh, um, give this car to me in, in a, how, how, like the period of time, I don't know, but I paid for it, I already paid for it. That means that my money flew to them and uh, this is the the final good this is the final service i don't know it's uh, how I, I, I got it i got it thank you <laughs> I, I i can explain a little bit more so uh, to understand the logic so we pay now and uh, this construction company uh, from our money will pay wages to workers and wages is the income of labor labor income yes at, and it will be included in gdp this year agree so this construction company will pay for capital equipment and uh, income or uh, capital income is also will be included in gdp if we uh, consider uh, uh gdp or if we count gdp by in incomes approach income approach yes so why not also uh, when we pay uh, for construct uh, for buildings uh, construction, uh, you know that uh, it is uh, not consumption spending, so uh, it is investments. Yes. So to pay for buildings, yes, it is investment, and investment is uh, uh, spending of a firm. And uh, it, uh, if we consider uh, our spending approach. For counting GDP, it is also included. And if we say about investments, uh, uh, this will be inventory investment. Inventory investment, инвестиции в товарные материальные запасы. Мы сейчас проинвестировали, мы сейчас вложили деньги. Это наши инвестиции в товарные материальные запасы для того, чтобы здание было построено. Вот. Но эти инвестиции они происходят сейчас. Да, и из них будут платиться там зарплаты рабочим, не знаю, за аренду помещений, за материалы. Это все сейчас происходит. Вот. Поэтому это сейчас включается в ВВП. Хорошо? Let's write it down. So, uh, two explanations. So, first explanation about the service right now. And uh, spendings approach, it's uh, inventory investment. Questions about this? Uh, I, I know that uh, this is the hardest point in this uh, task. Maybe to explain one more time, no? Okay. Um, no, no, it, it's okay now, thank you. A, B, C, D, E, F, F, aha. Uh -huh. Unemployment benefits paid by the government to people who lost their jobs. Um, Elizabeth, please. 
Well, here I believe it's not counted because it's not a consumption and uh, a, a payment for a good, but just rather a transfer of money. Yes, it's transfer of money, nothing is produced. Yes, it's transfer of money, exactly. So transfers are not included in GDP. No, because it is transfer. Transfer from one economic agent to another economic agent. Yes, and nothing is produced. Then, uh, ah, that's all about this task. So I erase. Um, maybe questions about number two. Mm -hmm. so, okay, let let us continue. Number three. Number three. Uh -huh. We will do the table. First, let's uh, write down together. During a given year, the following activities occur. So here in this task, we have two companies, silver mining company and the jewelry manufacturer. Let's write down two companies. Silver company. And jewelry manufacturer. Mm -hmm. um, a silver mining company pays its workers uh, 200 thousands to mine 75 pounds of silver. Then this silver is then sold by this company to a jewelry manufacturer for 300 thousands. So here about silver company, we can write down uh, such information about revenue and expenses. So the revenue of silver company, how much? Please answer who, who wants Once 100,000, I guess. No, revenue, revenue. Oh. 100 multiplied by the... Uh, uh, mm, ah, no, actually I believe it's 100,000, yeah. Revenue, not profit, guys. Uh, okay, uh, 300,000, I guess. 300,000, uh -huh. yes. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Silver, the silver is then sold to, to a jewelry or manufacturer for 300,000, yes. So 300,000. Then revenue, expenses. Expenses. We see here only on wages, yes, wages. Only on wages, uh, and this is... 200,000. And now, remember microeconomics, we can calculate profit. Yes, so profit of this company is total revenue minus total costs. Revenue minus expenses. So, and this will be 100,000. Agree? Yes. 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 So then, next company, jewelry manufacturer. Jewelry manufacturer pays its workers uh, 250. It will go to expenses. Let's write down the same revenue. Expenses. And in expenses, we have wages. Wages, 250,000. Mm -hmm. Then, which the manufacturer sells directly to consumers for 1 million. Sells directly to consumers so for one million, it will go to revenue. One million is the revenue of jewelry manufacturer. What I forgot to write down for jewelry manufacturer. What to add? Oh, Repeat the question, please. Uh, question, yes. hear the question, yeah. Uh, repeat. Oh, no, no, yeah. your question. What did you Hi. ask? No? Hi. Uh, what, what I forgot to write down for jewelry manufacturing? Uh, how much it paid to the silver company? Yes, exactly. Yes. So 
it will be in expenses because uh, drill manufacturer spends this money. So this is the spendings for materials. Yes, silver purchases. Hundred thousand, and now we are ready to our count profit. Profit will be how much? I guess it will be four hundred and fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. Four hundred fifty thousand. Yes. So revenue minus total costs. Total costs are uh, we uh, sum up wages plus uh, spending on uh, buy for buying materials. Yes, mm -hmm. good. This is profit. So and now let us answer our points. So point A: Using the market value of final goods approach, what is GDP in this economy? So our first approach: uh, market value of final goods approach. Once, uh -huh. um, uh, Nadezhda, please. Mm, I think is uh, if silver is an intermediate good, so we need to count only GDP of final value of jewelry, so it's one million. Yes, exactly. So final good is uh, this uh, uh, necklaces, yes, uh, from jewelry manufacturer, and uh, uh, it was sold by one million to consumers. I agree. So here one million. Final good. Good, these uh, necklaces. Point B. Thank you. Uh, using the market value of uh, uh, what is the value added at each stage of production? And we need to use value added approach. So we need to count value added on stage of silver company, production silver company, and value added of a jewelry company. And then to count GDP, which will be the sum of value added. Yes, so for all economic agents that are present right now here. Uh, Daniel, please. Okay, so um, value added is uh, revenue minus the intermediate goods that a company uses in production. Uh, so for from one, it uses no intermediate goods at all. Uh, so uh -huh. we can just uh, put 300,000 uh, immediately. Yes. And then the jewelry manufacturer, uh, they use 300,000. Uh, of intermediate goods, so one million minus three hundred thousand equals seven hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. We sum those values up. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Plus seven hundred thousand. And this is, as we understand, one million. So. Uh, value added uh, of each company is the difference between total revenue of this company minus expenses on uh, materials, what they pay to a previous, uh, uh, to previous company, okay? All other expenses are not included in these uh, expenses on uh, materials. We do, not, uh, we do not extract here wages because wages are made uh, so workplaces are provided by this company. So this company uh, made these two uh, two uh, two hundred thousand. Okay, and uh, it will be. Uh, uh, so we uh, that's why we do not extract it. We extract only expenses on materials that are bought from previous companies. Yes, in this scheme. Agree. Mm -hmm. And the GDP, say one million. Then C. In point C, 
income approach, I think. Yes, what are the total wages and profits earned using the income approach? What is GDP? Income approach. We should calculate income of uh, uh, all factors of production in this economy, and this will be GDP. So, who wants? Well, Jessica, please. Mm, so, we need to calculate labor income. It's uh, 200,000 plus uh, 250,000 uh, and capital income. Uh, 100,000 plus uh, 450,000 and it will be 1 million. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, good, thank you. So labor income, sum of wages from two companies. Yes, this will be plus 200 plus 250, 500, 450. I don't think that we can call uh, Profit as uh, earning of uh, capital, as uh, income of capital. Capital, uh, uh, what is capital as a resource? Capital is, uh, for example, buildings, uh, capital equipment, yes, things like that. And uh, uh, income of capital is, you know, it is, uh, uh, it is uh, interest rate, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, income of labor is wage, we know. Income of land is rent. And fourth factor of production, who knows? Maybe in Russian. Um, there are like five, I think, of them. It's information and... Uh, um, or what? Entrepreneurial what? skills, I think. Yes, entrepreneurial skills, yes. Предпринимательские способности. And... Income of entrepreneurial skills is profit by definition. So here we will have not uh, capital income, but into, uh, entrepreneurial skills income. Okay, it's profit, sum of profits. Enter, entrepreneurial skills income. Sum of profits of two companies. So if you are a good entrepreneur, you will have profit. So it's your income. Uh -huh. uh, 100 plus 450. And this is 550. So then we sum up all uh, in, uh, incomes of all factors of production and we will have our GDP by using income approach. So our GDP, sum of incomes, and this will be, as we understand, one million. So you can use different approach, uh, different approaches to count the same. Agree? Mm -hmm. uh, guys, please questions about this task. Mm -hmm. Okay. So erase and continue. Number four. What uh, uh, one one more approach that we did not uh, consider yet? Do you know? Well, yeah, the approach, income approach, final approach. approach, and we will speak about it in next tasks. Good. Mm -hmm. uh, number four. Suppose a country is unable to borrow from abroad and must always equate the value of its exports and imports. Let us write down this information. So export always equal to import. Then, um, if its private sector is currently saving a lot more than it is investing. Savings of private sector are higher than Investments. It's from the test. I write down. Mm -hmm. Is the government in surplus or deficit? Government in surplus or deficit? 
first question. Uh, what is the government surplus or deficit? Diana, please. Let's, let's yeah, I it. wanted to answer this question. Like surplus, it's like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like the hot, something like that. And deficit is deficit, I think, as in Russian. And uh, may I try to answer this question? Okay, let's try. Uh, uh, so probably um, we can speak about the short run and uh, long run because uh, uh, I suppose that uh, in short run, government uh, may be in surplus, but uh, in the long run, maybe in deficit because uh, so investing works uh, like in the future, something like that. Um, uh, the concept of uh, short run and long run that uh, uh, about which you are speaking now is uh, from microeconomics. In macroeconomics, we have another concept of short run and long run, and we cannot uh, uh, count it like this. Here we use, in this task, we use uh, uh, our, uh, we need to use our ma macroeconomic identities to answer this question. We will speak about long run uh, in uh, micro, uh, when we will uh, when we will speak about uh, the solo model and uh, I don't I don't remember which class it will be maybe number six or something like that but now uh, we cannot say about uh, here about short run and long run so my question government surplus is what Mr Sir please maybe it's uh, um, the like money which government gains from uh, taxes, from mm -hmm. like taxation. And um, <laughs> also we have government, uh, uh, things which uh, government uh, have, like for example, buildings, and also it could be rent from these buildings, uh, um so yeah mm -hmm. so one, uh, one more time so that's substance, what is uh, we don't consider here as so or so narrow approach government surplus is uh, only the difference between incomes of government and spendings of government and that's all incomes of government is Net taxes, you know this. Spendings of government is government spendings. Yes? And this, if the difference between uh, income of government and spendings of government is positive, so government is in surplus. And that's all easy. Yes? So it's bigger than zero, then it is surplus. If spendings are higher than net taxes, so government is in deficit. Agree? Okay, so next, then. How also we can name uh, the difference between uh, income of government and government spendings? If it is greater than zero, so what the government will do with this money, extra money, it will save it. it uh, this money will go to financial market. Do you remember this uh, model, uh, circle model, micro circle model? Model Kruga Barota, it's all, uh, all from this. So if a government saved, uh, saved this difference, we can name it government savings. It's the difference between income of government, net taxes, and government spendings. By definition, it's government savings. They can be greater than zero or less than zero. We have savings SP, we have savings of private sector. It's savings of households. Then uh, we have government, households, firms. What firms does? Firms does investments. Firms do investments, yes? And what we forgot? We forgot financial sector for economic agents. Financial sector savings is what? savings of financial sector is the difference between earnings of, uh, of a foreign sector and uh, spendings. 
earnings of foreign sector, how much we pay to other countries. It's what? It's import or export? Export. How much we pay we to another country? Import. Yes, import. Sir, we, we pay for import. So it's a, a income of foreign sector import. And foreign sector spends money on buying or export products for buying oil or something like this. Yes. So import minus export is saving of foreign sector. And here we need to use microeconomic identity, which one? Investment is always equal to what? The leakings probably or not. Mm. Now, uh, to savings, probably. To savings. Investments equal to savings. So, all uh, why? All economic agents save their money, and this, says, uh, uh, this money that they save, all economic agents, they go to financial market. Yes? We do not uh, have uh, this money under our pillow. Our money works always. Yes? So, all savings of all economic agents, they go to financial market. And who is the only, uh, uh, who, uh, who is uh, the, uh, the only economic agent who, who needs this money from financial sector? Firms, they, they uh, have credits and uh, make investments for credit money, agree? So all investments equal to total savings of all economic agents this is microeconomic identity one one of savings of all economic agents consists of savings of private sector of households plus savings of financial uh, savings of uh, government plus savings of foreign sector agree what we know that savings of government is taxes net taxes minus government spendings, savings of foreign sector is import minus export, private, or private sector is this one. So investments from firms, private savings from households, government savings from government, and this from foreign sector. We have four economic agents in the economy, in the open economy. What information we know? We know that, so now use this information. Export equals to input, yes? So savings of foreign sector equals to zero, agree? So this is equal to zero from the test. Then what else do we know? Let, let us rewrite. Investments should be equal to private savings plus uh, taxes minus government spendings. And use the information, the second information, that investments now less than private savings. So from these two informations, what conclusion we can make? What we can say about this difference? To, to have here equality. And Yes, please. Um, it should be negative. It should be negative. So yes. we have the the it um difficult. Yes. Deficit. Deficit. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. Deficit. Oh, yes, we will have deficits. It's both your deficit. So you understand that may maybe it's uh, hard for you. So you know, for example, that five equal to five. And also you know that five is less than seven. So what I need to do with seven to make five? I need to make seven minus two, yeah. so negative, yes? So here we have investment should be equal to this sum. And we know that one or one, or one part is greater than investment. So the second part should be negative, agree? Okay, so here we have our net taxes, 
minus government spending uh, less than zero, that means that uh, government is in deficit. Government budget is in deficit. Agree? Yes, please questions about this. Also for solving this task, you can use uh, uh, your uh, identity that you know about leakages should be uh, equal to injections. You can do it by yourself. You will have the same. You will have the same result. So try to do it at home by using this identity. Always equal to injections. Okay. So let's continue. I think Maxim has question. Ah, uh, please, Maxim. Yeah, I have a question. So basically, if we uh, get the negative number uh, after all all our calculations, well. And I'm also talking about your example right in the below. So only if it's negative, the number is negative, we can say that it's deficit, yeah? So it works like in a simple fashion. Mm -hmm. So here we have uh, net taxes minus government spendings less than zero. That means that net taxes less than government spendings. That, what that means? That the government earns less than spend. That means that government budget is in deficit. Remember, always remember Russia. Yeah, okay. Ah, uh, yeah, it makes sense now, actually. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's continue. Number Mm -hmm. Let's write it down. So, um, assume GDP is 6,000. The term for uh, how we name GDP, why? Yes, yield. GDP is 6,000. Then, personal disposable income. Personal disposable income, we name it. Y, D, D for disposable. Income of uh, households is our GDP and this uh, disposable income, here D, we put, we put D. Disposable income, 5,100. So this is disposable. May I ask you a quick question? Right, please. Disposable means располагаем? Mm -hmm. А? Я говорю, от которого можно избавиться. Да, 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 да. Ну, типа, располагаем доход, да. Yes, yes. Uh, then, the government budget deficit is 200. So, we see budget deficit. That means spendings of government are bigger than net taxes. So, spendings of government minus net taxes equals to 200, budget deficit, 200. Budget deficit. Agree? Mm -hmm. Then consumption is uh, 3,800. This you know, consumption 3,800. Spending so household. Um, trade deficit is 100. Trade deficit is what? It, uh, that means that we, uh, our country spends more money than uh, we uh, get from uh, international trade. Agree? What that means? That means uh, our spending, so our country is import. Yes, we pay for import goods. So our spendings on import is bigger than we are earn from export. So import minus export equals to uh, 100. This is trade deficit. So the hardest uh, here is to write down the task. Then uh, find the values of private savings as from, from previous task. 
private savings, savings of households, then uh, investment and government spending. Um, Anastasia, please. Um, as you wrote uh, in a previous task, um, our um, spendings, yes, uh, are equal to um, like a big S, I mean, spendings. Uh, or of all the, economic agents. Yes, and that means that uh, spendings of uh, private sector plus spendings uh, of government, yes, and uh, then uh, plus uh, spendings of firms, yes. Mm -hmm. So we can rewrite it as spendings uh, um, like of households minus uh, oh, plus uh, T uh, plus T minus G as you write it. Mm -hmm. And uh, plus um, in um, invest, import uh, minus export, yes. Mm -hmm. so, so what we know. Yeah, we know um, import minus export. Mm -hmm. We know um, spendings. No, 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 no. no it, yeah, we need to find it. Um, we know actually G minus T. It's going to be minus two um, if we um, like put it. Uh, yeah, minus two hundred. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you see. Uh, spendings minus net taxes 200, so vice versa minus 200. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, here we have two unknowns, investment and uh, private spend, uh, private um, but saving. I think we can find investment. How? From, we have like a formula which says that our GDP is equal to um, consum not consumption, uh, like C plus uh, I, yes? Mm -hmm. No, uh, formula for GDP uh, uh, using spendings approach is spendings of households, consumption plus spendings of yes, firms. yes plus. But then, yeah, like this. Investments plus spendings of uh, of government plus spendings of uh, uh, foreign sector net export. From here, we will find uh, the same. It's uh, identity. Hmm. We will have two unknowns, but I think you're speaking about disposable income. We also know yeah. about- Yes, this one. Disposable income is our income after we pay taxes. Yes, that we can, uh, uh, we, that we can uh, spend on consumption or we can save this money. So uh, you, uh, you have wage, you pay taxes, from your wage, and then you can uh, buy something or you can save money, agree? So yes. we have two formulas for disposable uh, income. This is our money that we can spend on consumption, plus we can save. Also, disposable income is our- Consumption plus- total, uh, It's our total income minus ta all taxes that we paid, minus net taxes, agree? So we can use these two formulas. And from here, from first, we can find what? We can find savings, private savings, agree? Yes. So private savings is disposable income 5,100 minus uh, consumption 3,800. 3, this is how much? Uh, one, like, yes, yes. Uh huh. One thousand three hundred. Then also from this info, we can find what we can find taxes from the second information. Taxes, net taxes will be GDP minus disposable income. So total income GDP is the sum of incomes by using income approach. So this is total income minus disposable income is how much we paid for taxes. Yes, net taxes here. And this will be 6,000 uh, 6, minus 5,100. This is 9, 
Andrew. Then what uh, what we need to we can, we can paste spendings uh, into a previous formula which we written down mm -hmm. and find uh, income and find uh, investment. Oh yes, sorry. Invest investments, yes. Good, let's do it. So investments will be uh, private uh, private savings one thousand three hundred. Minus 200 plus 100. Good. And this is uh, uh, 1,200. Mm -hmm. And uh, government spendings. We know budget deficit and now we know net taxes. Mm -hmm. That's last one. So we know G minus T equals to 200. Put here net taxes that we found 900. So from here, government spendings will be how much? 1,100. Agree? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we found everything. Private savings, here investments, and government spendings. Uh, this is uh, the typical task. The typical uh, the typical task for uh, or for microeconomic identities for the circle model micro, uh, microeconomic circle model so uh, to train uh, try to train to uh, to find in your textbook and to do more such problems because it's typical and I think you will have such somewhere, I don't know, maybe. So let, let's move on. Number six. We need to answer. So guys, please prepare who wants to answer. Uh, we, we need to uh, discuss why are these statements wrong. Point A, a high per capita real GDP is always a good thing. High GDP per capita, always good. And we need to uh, uh, present arguments why this uh, uh, statement is wrong. Uh, will you see? Please try. Okay, I can try. First of all, we should say that uh, there are some uh, cases when uh, uh, GDP is uh, uh, very high, as example, in uh, very rich uh, uh, countries of Persian Gulf. Uh, but uh, we should understand that, uh, first of all, it is generated by a very primitive economy of uh, oil of uh, oil extraction, and it doesn't protect and it doesn't provide any uh, sustainable sustainable uh, economic development, not growth. First of all, and we also should understand that in that country there are a lot of immigrants uh, who are not uh, enjoying uh, such comfort as uh, native people. Uh, and uh, here we can uh, use uh, Gini index uh, to compare people from different households in order to understand uh, the level of uh, inequality because uh, when uh, societies with uh, higher inequality it is uh, not useful to use high GDP per capita because for example you can in the imaginary situation you can have I don't know three households and uh, one uh, holds uh, I don't know holds 99% uh, of uh, whole economy and another shares uh, uh, and to another shares to one person but uh, the overall shares about one third that's not useful mm -hmm. So, uh, Yelisi, thank you. Uh, your logic, uh, uh, you have right logic, but uh, I think your uh, argument is uh, uh, a little bit difficult for uh, for the information in our task. Uh, in micro course, we, uh, okay, in any course, you, um, uh, 
uh, you are learning how to use only information from the task to answer such difficult questions. Difficult question, yes. But we need to use only information from this task. So, because we're doing modeling, yes? We do not uh, consider all factors that okay. influence the economy. So, uh, Anastasia, please. I'm not sure, but like, um, for example, we have example of Russia where real GDP is very higher, like it's higher than nominal GDP, but that doesn't mean that uh, our, like, for example, situation in country is good, that we, um, like, it doesn't um, show us the real situation in country uh, for, because like nominal GDP, as we know, is like, the value of final goods and services um, of the region or state in, in uh, like expressed in current market prices or values, uh, like and real GDP takes into account um, the extent to which GDP growth is determined by real production uh, gr production growth rather than price growth. So. I don't know how to explain it in the simple words. <laughs> uh, your logic is also right, but uh, the, here we do not have uh, the uh, nominal and real GDP. Here we have GDP per capita, and we, we need to work with this GDP per capita. So let me uh, let me uh, write down. So what means GDP per capita? It's real, real GDP, GDP all, divided by population. <laughs> Real GDP divided by the number of people, yes, residents of the country. And a good situation is when we have a, a high GDP, real GDP. That's good, yes? That's good. But uh, maybe in our country, there live, I don't know, two people. If we have very low population, it will not show why, uh, it, it will, we will have high GDP per capita, yes? But we cannot say by, that uh, this is a good thing. When we have uh, a low uh, number of people in the country, that means that we have a uh, few labor, and that means that uh, we will have low economic growth low amount of factor of production labor, agree? So GDP, hi, that's good, but maybe we have low amount of people, number of people is low. And that means that we have for example, few labor, or we will have a uh, uh, low, uh, low amount of residents. That means that uh, our, but all our residents, all our households, they own all factors of production. That means that we have a low amount of owners of production, few labor and other factors of production. And that means that we will have low economic growth and that's bad. You guys questions about this task or you want to, uh, to do next? Uh -huh. Do the next. Ne ne uh, okay, next. Uh, in uh, 2010, crime movie earned one billion more at uh, the box office than Gun with the Wind earned 50 years ago. Uh -huh. And uh, conclusion, crime movie is definitely a bigger box uh, office success. So who didn't answer? Uh, Diane, please. Oh, wait, I didn't even have time to read the task. Uh... Okay, so in 2010, crime movie earned one billion dollars more at the box office than Gone with the Wind. Okay, so okay, let's see. 50 years ago, 
and we should say is definitely bigger box office success. Uh, no at all, no at all, because as we can see, well, first of all, first thing that comes to my mind is that uh, we can see that the time gap between those two movies is huge, uh, 50 years, and uh, well, in case of any, yes, look at valuta. Currency. Okay, so currency. Yeah, in case of any currency, but in, in this case we're talking about dollar. We should take. Um, we should consider inflation first of all, and uh, the value that one billion dollars was fifty years ago, and the value of one billion dollars today is very different. And we know that previous one billion dollars is uh, not even close to today's value. And that is not the, not how we should count the success of uh, the movie in case of box office. So we should take a lot of things into consideration and inflation is one of the biggest parts. Yes, exactly. So here is the answer about inflation and that is what Anastasia told us, yes, in the for, for, for previous point, exactly. So here we should, we should recount to, to compare success, uh, to answer about success, we should recount in real terms. Yes, in real terms. In general, Not with these topics of GDP, inflation, economics, we should consider a lot of things rather than just make decisions. It's because it, it sounds like, uh, you know, um, uh, a joke about, um, about an average temperature in a hospital. So in this case, we also should consider a lot of things rather than just counting. If we will consider all factors one more time, you, uh, e economics is uh, uh, is about uh, everything around us, and if we will consider all factors, we can uh, we will not answer any question. Yes, so yes, of we are course, using, of course. So we are using modeling approach, and here in this task, we use this information and uh, tell only about the main factor. Main factor is uh, inflation. inflation. So here we cannot use nomin uh, nominal terms. We should use real terms. Yes, we should recount yes. it in real terms. That means in comparable prices. So we should uh, take uh, the base year, any base year, and compare. That's all for this test. Uh, base year prices. Um, any other questions, comments? I think we should also consider how much money was spent on the production of movie and how success was moving in case of uh, um, no, We're talking only about uh, box office uh, profits, uh, re revenues. Well, about if we're not movie. talking about box uh, office, but about profit of the movie, how profitable the movie was. Uh, one more time here uh, today, uh, our topic is GDP and in GDP, we count only final goods. Yes, not intermediate, and everything production, blah blah blah. It's uh, okay. it's intermediate, intermediate parts. Yes, and uh, box office is final, so we consider only final good. Okay, uh, revenue of box office. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So, um, let uh, please raise your hands who answered today. I will write down. So Diane. Thank you, Maxim. And Maxim. Ah, Elizaveta. Я очень рада то, что сегодня отвечали те, кто до этого не отвечали, или может быть я уже запутала сейчас. Елисей, Анастасия. Надежда, а Я поздравляю вас. Мы почти успели закончили семинар первый раз полностью весь. Я буду сегодня это праздновать. We're making progress. 
Да, ну ладно, это потому что просто макроэкономика, но на ней чуть побыстрее все-таки. Мне кажется, что микро для... вот в вашем курсе она сложнее, конечно, чем макроэкономика. Макроэкономику вам супер упростили. Ну ладно, смотря какой семинар, но посмотрим. Вот, в общем, всех поздравляю. Вот, поздравляю всех, кто сегодня отвечал. Вот, призываю остальных тоже отвечать. Вот, потому что, мне кажется, там, ответить на вопрос, включено ли это в ВВП, это очень легко, и можно на этом там, себе заработать плюсик. Вот, это круто. Все, Спасибо. давайте тогда расходимся. Спасибо большое. До свидания. Спасибо. До свидания.